going to assemble themselves on a desk. I, you know, it needs a designer like you, for example, to, to put it together. Well, in, ter in terms of uh, ID, intelligent design, I'm very open to that because uh, the, the math and physics, see, I, I, I now teach PhD level math and physics. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know a lot of that stuff. And personally, now just my personal view, that uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised that the laws of physics have been actually designed. Mm -hmm. And I'm deeply suspicious that that's the case, because uh, why on earth uh, is, is the universe? Why, why are the laws of physics so deeply mathematical? Yes, and, and of course, that was, that was Crick and Watson. Uh, at least one of them uh, talked, put out the idea of panspermia after he looked at DNA. He said, hey, this is a program. This is, this is built. Uh, of course, he didn't want to embrace uh, the God of the Bible, so he created uh, some aliens who would, who would come and do that. But I want to get back to uh, some of the other calls. Let's go to uh, Brian in Indiana. Brian? Are you still there? Okay, let's go to uh, J.D. in Mississippi. J.D. Oh, okay, well, let's go to Michael in Missouri. Michael, go ahead. Yeah, how you doing, David? Good, go ahead. Yeah, first I just want to say uh, something that you'll probably uh, be interested in just real quick before I ask my question. Uh, I have a friend named Josh, and uh, we set up a uh, GoFundMe.com slash The Promised Land fund for him. It's just all about this medical tyranny. I don't want to explain it. People can go there. Uh, it's uh, GoFundMe.com slash The Promised Land with a uh, E okay. on the uh, promise. But, that's, uh, that's good. Yeah, do you have a question for uh, Dr. DeGaris on artificial yeah, intelligence? I, I was wondering uh, if he's ever read the book The Feed that came out in probably the last 15 years. And if he has, does he think that, I mean, it's a fictional book, but is that where we're headed? Because that... I mean, I don't want to be going there. Well, what's the premise of that book? It's uh, where most of the population live in huge cities all over the country, and they travel on up cars through tubes, and there's a small population of people who don't have any chips in them. Who oh, kind of like Agenda them. 21, in other words. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, read that book, yeah. too. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> okay. Uh, Dr. DeGaris, did you have any comment on that? It's a little bit off topic, but... Uh, I've not read that particular book, but I'm scared stiff of this idea of chipping the population, which yeah. is uh, what what uh, the New World Order is all about. That scares me crazy. Yes, yes, we share that concern, absolutely. Uh, let's go to Eric in Michigan. Eric. Yeah, hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, Dr. Hugo, I've heard you uh, a number of times today uh, refer to these machines as um, as gods, as creating gods. Um, and also referring, you're referring to uh, the human race as uh, having feeble lives and our, in the fact that our lives are so short. Um, I don't know. I, but wouldn't we be the gods if we're the ones that are creating the machines? Just like, a, you know, many people believe that a god created our universe. Well, I think Dr. Dr. Garris, did you want to address that? I think your idea is that uh, these these uh, once they get to a certain level, they would uh, transcend us. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's the obvious answer. I mean, obviously, we we as humans, we would be the parents. Right? We 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 would kick off. We would start the process, and then after you know, very quickly, they they would just uh, gather their own momentum and just do it themselves. And and. Very quickly, we human beings, we wouldn't be able to understand what they were doing. I mean, they're thinking a million times faster than we are. They're, they're growing their circuitry at a rate that we, we couldn't understand. They could rearrange their circuitry and architecture in like milliseconds. We would just be absolutely lost. But yes, we, we are at square zero. We start the process, we kick it off, and then it goes ahead on its own momentum. The idea that once it gets to a certain level of intelligence uh, and capable of independent thought that you would have something similar to what we saw portrayed in the movie Terminator when Skynet becomes self-aware. Or you, know, you might think of it, the intelligence as uh, uh, reaching a critical mass, if you want to use a nuclear yeah. analogy. Once yeah. it reaches a critical mass, all of a sudden it just explodes and, and uh, right. starts to go. And as you point out, yeah. the, the real question is whether or not uh, it's going to happen quickly or over a slower period of time. Let's go to Dennis in Colorado. Dennis. Oh, wait, we've got to go to a commercial break. Uh, we'll be right back. We're talking to Dr. Hugo DeGaris about the possibility of an artificial intelligence war. One fought over the development of artificial intelligence or perhaps one fought with artificial intelligence. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. This is Sharon Hunt. Before using Heart and Body Extract, my energy level was very, very low. I could only walk a few feet and then would have to sit down. I was tired and lethargic. But after taking Heart and Body Extract, my energy level has improved greatly, and I can now walk longer distances without getting tired so fast. Thank you, Heart and Body Extract. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. As the new world order continues to tighten its grip on every facet of our lives, we're all asking ourselves, how can we maintain our independence? The answer is clear. Get prepared and you get prepared now. Now the only question left is where do we begin? My Patriot Supply is here to help. Call 800-247-3070 to get started with your 72-hour emergency food supply for only $10. We're even covering the cost of shipping. Are you willing to rely on the government and FEMA in the event of an emergency? Call 800-274-3070 to get started with your 72-hour emergency food supply for only $10. You won't be able to find this deal online, and there is a strict limit of four per caller, so don't wait. Call now, 800-274-3070. That's 800-274-3070. Call right now used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 this is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. It's happening again. The feds are trying to ban your freedom to own body armor. In January, a newly introduced bill, H.R. 378, will take away your right to buy level 3 and higher body armor. Katie Armor offers the most affordable level 3 body armor packages on the market today. Protect yourself. Buy your body armor now before it's too late. Go to katiearmor.com. That's C-A-T-I armor.com. Come and take it. to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we're talking to Dr. Hugo DeGarris, one of the pioneers in artificial intelligence. We're talking to him about his book, The Artelic War, about the first war of artificial intelligence, actually a war over whether artificial intelligence should be developed, whether or not we're going to have uh, super intelligent machines that might threaten the existence of mankind. Dr. DeGarris takes a dystopian view of... Uh, the long term over artificial intelligence versus Ray Kurzweil's decidedly utopian view. I want to get to your calls and questions. Uh, we just have him for one more second, so let's try to go through these as quickly as we can. Let's go to uh, Al in Arkansas. Al. Dr. DeGarris, um, 
I guess not as much a question as it is a comment as a Christian, but I believe that when we man exalts himself to a situation of trying to make himself God, that we will suffer God's wrath. Do you have any comment about that? And that's just my question, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not religious. Um, humanity has invented about a hundred thousand different gods over the broad sweep of history and over the planet. Every, every primitive little tribe invents its own gods. So I'm somewhat cynical of one particular, like, like everyone's an atheist. You've probably heard this argument before. Everyone's an atheist with respect to the 99.9999% of gods that they don't believe in. And, and the atheist just goes one step further. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, I think what the caller is getting at is the, uh, actually goes back to one of the first stories in the Bible, Garden of Eden, where the promise was you'll become like God. And I guess that's always been an enticement to uh, motivate people. Uh, let's, let's go to uh, J.D. in Mississippi. J.D., you had a question about uh, drones for Dr. Hugo DeGarris. Go ahead. Uh, yes, um, I was wondering, I might be a little bit naive on the subject, but um, how, will, uh, how will they get by the uh, fail-safe? Uh, switch or the kill switch, and also, um, how will j drones refuel themselves? Or will they just have so many of them that it won't matter? You know, will they just, you know, there'll be so many of them that, that you know, it's like a swarm. Well, Dr. I mean, Garris is really kind of talking about a different kind of uh, thing. He's talking about uh, massively intelligent artificial intelligence, but of course. Autonomous drones, uh, that is maybe one way that we may see some manifestation of uh, some early artificial intelligence, isn't it, uh, Dr. DeGarris? Well, I, I imagine drones, <coughs> in fact, I think it's already been done. I, I'm not an expert in this field, mm -hmm. but th there are drones like the size of a centimeter, or, you know, really, yes. really tiny. Micro and UAVs. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so once uh, you know, the resolution on the cameras and, and control, you know, once all those technical problems have been solved, and, and for all I know, that, that's already the case, then I can imagine this spying uh, just going on everywhere, all over the planet, including uh, you know, the things that the governments want to keep secret. So, so it's a, like a two-edged sword. So then the, the public becomes more aware of the, the so-called secret installations and all these bunkers underneath the, you know, under the ground and, and so on. So that uh, you know, governments have a really hard time keeping anything secret. Yes, so true. I, I, hope that I hope that kind of thing happens. Well, you know, what we're but seeing right now with drones is essentially like remote control killing devices. We even had an article uh, earlier this week that was on the Drudge Report about some police departments using uh, remote control uh, mechanical cops. I mean, that's not what we're talking about here in terms of artificial intelligence. But, uh, you know, that is, uh, I think, what most people are, are thinking about in terms of the projection of power, the concentration of power. Uh, let's go quickly to Brian in Indiana. Brian? Hello? Hello, go ahead. Hello? Thank you, thank you. Um, thanks, David. Uh, my question was about the possible malevolence versus benevolence of uh, AI, you know, as in, you know, seen in uh, Isaac Asimov's The Last Question. If you're familiar with the story, uh, versus yeah. like, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm sorry, uh, Prey by Michael Crichton. If you're familiar with that story, too. Go ahead, Dr. Garris. Uh, I'm, I'm not clear what the question is. I, I think he's asking uh, maybe the AIs will be benevolent. I know that uh, the movie oh, Her, right. that recently <laughs> came out, Ray Kurzweil was very excited about that because basically they, they reached to a point where they say, yeah, you guys are fine, but you're really not very interesting. They just basically go off on their own and do their own thing. Well, I, I see both. I mean, obviously uh, there'll be real benefits. Uh, you know, we can get rid of cancer and disease and aging and you know, all this wonderful nano stuff. On the positive side, uh, I, I don't deny that there, there'll be definitely both both aspects, but it's the negative that really worries me. You know, once once uh, once these machines become massively intelligent, then who's to say that uh, they may look on us as, as pests and, and decide to wipe us out? That that's what really worries me. Yes, and I'm concerned, uh, as I know you are, Doctor DeGaris, as to what. Uh, our governments are going to do with the technology that we hand them. That's why I think it's a, it's a very interesting um, uh, paradox for people who are in engineering and science to think about the consequences of what they're developing. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Hugo DeGaris. Again, that book is The Ardalic War. Ten years old, but very relevant today. Today it's in the discussion. We'll be right back with We're on the Paul Joseph.